Next question is from Jilly Bean 390 How often would you have to mix up cardio for your body not to adapt? Or does your body consider it all the same over time? You know, my answer to this depends on whether or not you only do cardio or you do resistance training as the foundation of your workout, okay? Because if you just do cardio, um, then it is important to switch different cardio modalities to avoid overuse injuries or imbalances because each form of cardiovascular activity involves some kind of repetitive motion over and over again that looks the same, right? So if you're biking, you're in a, a biking position and your legs are moving the same after every single time you, you do a, a cycle uh, on your bike. Or if you're running or you're doing a Stairmaster or a rower, the form looks the same and you're doing thousands and thousands of reps uh, building endurance. And that can develop uh, or, or it can lead to the development of imbalances and overuse injuries. And so whenever they've you know done studies on athletes, on endurance athletes, cross training helps prevent that. Because then what happens is you're still training stamina, but you're training different movement patterns. So if you go from like running to rowing, you're using different recruitment patterns for each movement and you're less likely to develop you know imbalances. If the cornerstone of your workout is resistance training, because remember, resistance training, if you do it right, you're training the whole body. You're training all movements. You're making the whole body strong. It doesn't really matter. Now it doesn't really matter. Now if you're a form of cardio. You can choose whatever it is. Keep doing it. As far as adapting is concerned in terms of calorie burn, you can make an argument, but I think we're splitting hairs when we when we get there. Well, there's actually there's actually studies around this um, that I, I remember reading a long time ago, but it very, was very interesting to me. And uh, if I recall, it was like, the average person adapts to whatever cardio modality they're doing within about two weeks. It doesn't take very long for the body to get very... Now, adapt doesn't mean all of a sudden you stop burning calories. It just means it gets very efficient at whatever you're doing. Changing up uh, the type, like from running to Stairmaster to swimming to rowing to rope type exercises will help. But overall, your cardio endurance is going to improve in all of those, and therefore the body will adapt and get good at it. So... That is a, this is another reason why I always make for the case for cardio to be the last thing that we start to add into a, a routine to if we're using it to lose body fat. If you're doing it for heart health, like bio, it doesn't matter, right? Well, you want to adapt. You want to be good at it. You want to have a strong heart. You want to be good at doing cardio. But if you're doing it for fat loss reasons, the body gets used to it and becomes very efficient at it really quick. And so if you're designing a weight loss or a fat loss program for yourself or for somebody, cardio is something is the last place that I want to go. I want to manipulate my training routine and my food first and use all the tools in my tool belt to get this person to change their uh, their physique. And then at the very end of their, you know, where we're peaking, when we're almost to like their, their ultimate physique or to their goal, I throw in cardio the last two to four weeks tops because of this reason, because the body will get so efficient at it. And then the only place to go is to just keep adding more time. And that's just an unrealistic place for most people to keep going. Like if you've been doing, if you started a fat loss routine for eight weeks, let's say, and you right away introduce cardio one hour a day, that first two weeks or so, you're going to see the initial results from that. And then the, the other six weeks, you're not going to see much movement from that cardio. And even if you're switching up all the different modalities, you're not going to see it move the needle very much. Then the only thing that you can do in that world to really start to see the movement is to add more time. Right, right. And then you're at an hour and a half and two hours. And that's just ridiculous for most people to maintain that for the rest of their life. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of like from an athletic perspective, like I would take some athletes and we would, uh, we would experiment and, and, uh, go through phases of different types of cardio. And, uh, you know, one, we would focus more on elevation. So we do, uh, like, like hill sprints for instance, uh, versus like on a level playing field. Uh, and then sometimes we do it for timed uh, bouts where it would go, we try and simulate like uh, the, the time of the length of the game play that would actually occur. And so um, just to get them like up, you know, in, in terms of like being able to have the durability and uh, in, endurance uh, to 
compete at the highest level, uh, you know, in their in their respective sports. So, you know, th- I mean, there's ways to like manipulate cardio and, and make them uh, applicable towards uh, a specific goal you have if it's sports related for sure. Uh, in terms of fat loss and all that, what the guys said, uh, the guys have already said is, is pretty much on point. Yeah. Now, you know, when, when Adam refers to efficiency, you know, your body also aims at getting efficient when you lift weights, it just becomes efficient at getting stronger, the side effect of which is burning more calories. When your body gets efficient with cardio, it actually learns to burn less calories because your body getting better at cardio means it doesn't need much strength because it's endurance-based, and it's trying to conserve the amount of calories you burn while you're doing it because cardio is such a calorie-intensive uh, endeavor. With resistance training, the main uh, signal you're sending is to get stronger. So your body still gets efficient. It's just the efficiency is... Let's get these muscles to be able to lift this weight better and easier, um, a.k.a. get stronger, side effect of which being more calorie burn. But, yeah, if, if all you do is cardio and you're an endurance athlete, um, well, number one, I'd say you should probably do some resistance training to offset some of the overuse stuff that you're doing. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to do cardio, yeah, mixing it up will help prevent some of that. It'll help you prevent your risk of injury and help you maintain your your training intensity. If the cornerstone of your routine is resistance training, there really isn't that big of a need to, to, to mix up your cardio.